You've probably never heard of it. And given it does over 200 miles an hour, you're probably going to have trouble seeing one. It's a Gumpert Apollo, the very latest supercar to vie for poster space on bedroom walls. It looks like a replacement for the F-16 fighter jet, and with a 0-62 time of just three seconds, a much faster replacement. It may not have the catchiest of names, but Roland Gumpert was the man in charge of Audi's rallying program when the Quattro was so dominant. So he's taken all that four-wheel drive expertise and done nothing with it. Instead, he's just built a dream car that goes like you know what off a shovel. It may be road legal, but Gumpert has dreams of motorsport stardom. Only 25 cars have been built so far, with half of them out and out racing machines. Of course, all this raciness comes at a compromise. The Gumpert Apollo may be a road car, but simple everyday practicalities are inevitably compromised. Like getting in. Fire up the engine and the cabin isn't so much dominated by a roaring V8, but more a whirring fuel pump, which very much takes me back to my old racing days. To get going, the clutch is heavy, the gear lever is heavy, and it's quite tricky to move forward. But in fact, it's very much like a modern day racing GT car. I've driven a lot of modern day supercars, they're actually quite docile. This is more like the good old fashioned supercars. It's rather intimidating, especially as you begin to open the throttle and wait for that boost to come in. Quite a close driving position, very unlike the modern day road car with the sort of sterling boss arms. Here I've got the steering wheel right almost in my face. Very racy. There is quite a lot of turbo lag with this big V8. Although that's got 700 horsepower, when you first open the throttle, it doesn't come in that quickly, so you don't have that neck snapping feel of a normally aspirated car or an instant response turbo, where one touch of the throttle snaps your head back. This gearbox is another nod towards a racing pedigree. It's quite hefty to use. It needs a good, firm tug back to change up the gears. And of course, you've got to depress the clutch. And when you change it down, you've got to do your own healing and towing. No auto blip here. Apollo prices start at £215,000, with this sport model costing £60,000 more. So, what do you get for your money? Well, not much, since it only weighs the same as a Mini, with race car-like steel tubing wrapped around a carbon passenger compartment, which sits in front of a very special 4.2-litre Audi V8. Mind you, unlike many supercars, it does have a proper boot. Well, ish. to get going, it's not actually that scary well, when you let it loose. The car is very stiffly sprung, there's very little body roll, which makes it very safe and sure-footed. The handling balance really is predominantly under, the steering is very light, and it's actually quite difficult to feel the grip, but oh, the front will just wash out if you try to get into the power too soon. You can't get the boost up until you're almost straight because you have half thrust and it just pushes what more happens here. It's only when you unleash the full 700 horsepower that the rear begins to step out. It's just you can't get to the power mid-corner because of the turbo lag. Incredibly, 
the £325,000 race model has an even more powerful engine. I'm not sure the car is ready for that just yet. With the Apollo, Gumpert has achieved his dream of building a supercar with an aerodynamic shape that not only looks stunning, but creates enough downforce to allow it to be driven upside down on the roof of a tunnel. I've been driving this car now for about 20 or 30 laps, so I feel more like I'm in the middle of a stint at Le Mans. This upright seating position is a little bit of a tiring side. Concentration is big, even though the steering is light. This is not a supercar for people that like the luxuries of their Lamborghini, Mercilagos, or Pagani, Zondas. This is a supercar for someone that fancies a Le Mans racer with a tax disc on the screen. 